This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello, my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today, we're going to be rummaging through the city and playing some music. We're going to be on that little flute or horn or whatever you want to call it, playing some melodies, trying to make the rats uh, follow us here. Today, we're talking about the Pied Piper. This is the latest in the Tales and Game series from Yellow. Uh, let me show you how it's played. It's for two to five players. Takes about 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, I'll show you how to play. I'll see you on the other side. Now, like all the other games in this great series, it comes with the actual tale of the game that you could read to your children. It actually has the Pied Piper story in here that you could read. And, of course, it always uses the box as some sort of setup or reference, and that's nice as well. And this, the, then there's the rules, and there's a nice place to put all the components. Very nice insert here. Here we have Pied Piper set up for four players. Each player is going to be sitting at the bottom of one of their houses, and there's going to be a wooden rat next to all the houses. The start player is here, for example. That player gets two rats to the left and the Pied Piper, who stands up normally, but for the video, we're gonna keep him down so you can see him. Now notice each of these rats have a different colored tail. That's very important because they will uh, have to do with some of the characters that are played. Now each player has one of these here and they start with four action cards. The object of the game is to be the last person standing and how you eliminate players is every time rats run through their house in either direction, this is gonna move up and once it gets to the top, that player is eliminated. So you're trying to get rats to run through players' houses to get this to the top to eliminate them to be the last person standing. Let's talk about how our turn works. Now on your turn, you have four action cards. You're gonna play two of those and you cannot play them on the same character. So I play this on the yellow rat and maybe this on the red rat, that'd be into my turn. And I would draw up two more action cards to refill my hand. Now the next player goes and maybe he places, let's see, a this on the Pied Piper and maybe he places this there and then he draws two. Now, anytime any character has two cards, they activate. If for some reason, two more than one character gets a second card, that player gets to choose which, which character activates first. Now, here you always do it in order. So this red mouse is gonna move back one and then forward two. Now this red mouse will go back one and because he went through this guy's house, this goes on here. Then forward two, one, Two. This one goes up one again, and this one goes up one, just like that. Now that would be the, 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 ca the red character's move. Now these cards would get discarded into a discard pile, so would this character, and a new character would come out, like that. And so we have the green mouse. And this goes on and on, and that's how things activate. Now let's talk about the Pied Piper. He works a little bit differently. Now let's say this guy moves forward once, twice. These move them down. So if this was up here and he moved down, he moved past me one, it would just go down one. So he acts like a reverse rat. He, for every time he crosses your house, he moves your rat tracker down one. For every time a rat goes on your, on your house, a rat tracker moves up one. And that's how, that's how this moves up and down. And again, the first one there uh, to the top is, is eliminated. Now you can see on the board here, the, the brown arrow goes to the left, the green arrow goes to the right. In this game, Turn order goes towards the right, towards the green. So everyone's gonna be going in counterclockwise motion here. Now let's look at a couple of examples here. Now let's say this purple one uh, had a back one and a forward one on it, and this guy had just activated. He's gonna go back one and forward one. Well, this stinks for this guy because he's gonna go back one and then forward one and bring it up. So that guy just got brought up twice and then that character would have been obviously discarded. Let's go over some of the other ones. Well, let's say someone put a sewer here and then the second card was a plus one. That means basically it does this twice. Now let's show you what the sewer does with this green rat. Now what this means, the green rat goes past here, but instead of going through it and raising this, he goes through the sewer and doesn't hurt him. And since it was a plus one, he goes under this sewer as well. Now let's say on this red character, rat, someone does a, a forward one, and then someone does the Pied Piper melody. What this means is that all the rats are gonna move one with wherever the red one is. Oh man, so here's the red one. So one, two, three, four. All the rats, one, two, three, four. This guy just got demolished by that melody. Now let's say I played some cards that raised this guy up and he's out of the game. Essentially, this is completely gone and I would keep this as a tiebreaker. And now there's only three of us. So now the rats can be here, 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 or here. 
and this would continue. As soon as another player is eliminated, let's say I did this, and then as soon as there's two players left, whoever's rat tracker is lower wins. If there's a tie, then whoever has the most rat tracks from eliminating other players wins. Now there's a two player variant where the, the two players that are playing against each other play sit across from each other. They put houses here, but there's no rat uh, tracks. And when the rats go through, nothing happens to these and whoever gets eliminated first loses. There's also an advanced variant you can play uh, and basically has some secretive things. So basically when you place your two, uh, your two action cards, uh, one of your cards, either the first or the second one, is going to be placed face down and the other one is going to be face up. And so now when a second card comes and activates this later, this will then flip up and we'll see what it is and adds a little bit of intrigue and bluffing uh, elements to the game. There's also a variant for really small children where you throw out all of the melody and the plus one cards and when you play a card, even if it's just one, you automatically move this rat, but he stays there until a second card's moved and then he discards like normal, but it lets moves go one at a time to let the little kids figure out what's going on right away. Now I've been a big fan of this whole series since the beginning uh, and, and there's been some that I've loved, I've kept most of them, uh, there's just one that I didn't really like that much. How does this one s stack up? The game itself is quick and easy, I mean it's just like all these games, it's easy but there's a little bit of a layer of depth there. I mean you're just simply playing two cards on a turn, moving some guys and that's it. You're just trying to inflict pain or uh, you know take that on other players and trying to protect yourself. This game, by the nature of it, what you're trying to do is attack other players. So just be wary of that, knowing that this game is you're trying to be mean to each other. So if you're playing with little kids, if they're poor sports or they, they get upset easily when you're messing with their stuff, this might not be the best one of the bunch uh, of this because it's, they're going to probably have a temper tantrum when you run rats back and forth through all their thing. But with that being said, if they're, if, if, if they're old enough to, to handle that uh, in the correct way, then this can be a fun game for kids uh, and adults. Now the thing about this is the games of this series in the past the reason why I've kept a lot of them is because typically they had two variants, one for the kids and one that's good for older kids and adults. I mean, uh, some of the other ones I've kept, I can still play those with adults with no kids and still have a lot of fun. This one has some has a variant with the you know the hidden card, and that does add another element. Uh, but it's not quite as deep as some of the other ones for adults. And since I don't have kids, I'm probably not going to be keeping this one. But it is a good game if, if you like this. The theme's cool. Those mouse are really cool. Uh, the rats, sorry. Uh, I like how they all have the different colored tails and it shows you what character they are. And it's a fun game messing with other people. How does it stand with all the other ones? Well, the, the tortoise and the hare is my favorite. And the three, three little pigs is next and then grasshopper and the ants next. Then after that, it's probably about tied with uh, Baba Yaga. And then, of course, uh, the, the one I liked the least was Little Red Riding Hood. So it's probably on the lower end, but probably right about the middle. Right about tied, maybe a little higher than Baba Yaga. So about middle, middle of the range. Not a bad game. Uh, I liked it. Uh, it's just uh, I play mostly with adults, and this one probably does, isn't as advanced, I'd say, as some of the other games. So I have as much depth there. Uh, but overall, if you've got kids, uh, this is definitely one of the series to enjoy, and that's the Pied Piper. This video was sponsored by Miniature Markets Review Corner. The Review Corner features podcasts, video, and written game reviews by gamers for gamers. Miniature Market, the online gaming superstore. Thousands of board games, discounted prices. Check them out at miniaturemarket.com.